I wonder what little lady made these. I did, sir. Brother Phil? Hi. Hi, I love your shirt. Thanks very it much. It feels thematic somehow. It's almost cowboyish. I don't know. Story the MFG. They were a wonderful husband and wife couple. They were based in London now in Brighton and all their dyes are natural fabrics, Ooh. recycled, upcycled, and anything wasted and turned wow. into packaging or labeling. And um, That's so cool. Yeah, they're kind of activist fashion designers. I love and, that. Yeah, beautiful, um, orientated, like you said. So there's a connection. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, I just saw the film this morning, so I'm still like. <laughs> it's yeah, a it's lot. a different one to talk it's about straight away. But yeah. yeah. Um, I think what was so fascinating is it sort of starts off as this this kind of classic Western and you get that sense of, of scale in the landscape and then it Anything de but. Yeah, it Anything devolves but. into this yeah. other I mean devolves not the right way, it evolves really into yeah. this kind of like gothic horror psychological S quartet psychodrama completely mm -hmm. what Absolutely. it is and everything else swirling around it whether it's you know uh, um, queer cinema whether it's the mm -hmm. western or toxic masculinity being examined but basically it's essential and is a forehand mm -hmm. psychological thriller definitely and i think i think the context can throw people off actually right. it's 1925 after all as well which is very much yes. post kind of but you don't Ford even wane versions of pioneering it, western films it feels it feels like a lens rather than a setting. Do Completely. you know what I mean? And also the Western aspect of it is another characteristic, right. whether it's the landscape or the activity in it. It's about alienating a character, which is obviously a mm. trope of Westerns, but, um, and there is otherness in it, but it's mm. not about um, ethnicity. In this case, it's about identity. Mm. Um, and I think, yeah, it feels to me like it's just a very, it, look, it's Thomas Savage's reality. That's what he mm. grew up in. Mm. Um, but you've got, the past and the present and the future and the present in my character is obsessed with the past my brother mm -hmm. who's looking to the future finds it with a romance and a, a boy who comes with that romance who's mm. incredibly part of the future who's mm. basically thomas savage encapsulated cody's character peter but i think you know yeah the western as a genre it, it's not a re-examination of that or right. a deconstruction of it it's not that right it's, it's right. very much um, an era and a setting mm. and an atmosphere but um well, I it's think very much about the four people that center it. What was so interesting about Phil as a character is there's so much kind of anger and 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 uh, I, it, to me it felt like he was he's angry, but it it's covering a fear. It's he's angry with the world before the world can be angry with right. him. And I don't think he truly understands his own inauthenticity, either, the, right. the secret at the heart of him, and what's revealed very centrally and um, evocatively through Ari's lens and Jane's mm. script and, and the book. You know, mm. it's a very slow burn with that Did character. you read you, the book in addition to? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. It was, it's an amazing blueprint mm. for character work, um, mm. on top of which we both work with Jungian dream analysts, uh, right. a Jungian dream analyst called Kim Gillingham, who was fantastic, mm. just sort of setting free some sort of deeper psyche work, which right. it needed. It's, it's a far cry from what I've played before. How challenging was that? I probably had the that? furthest to go of anyone, I guess. Um, it really challenged me. <laughs> but Jane was really, you know, she was just on board for it. And mm. she saw me. She saw him and she saw me and she saw the marriage mm. uh, in her mind, in the casting of it. And she said, look, I, I know this is going to be a journey for you, so what do you need? Mm. You know, we talked about dude camp and banjo lessons. And, mm. and I went to Montana for two weeks. I studied under an amazing uh, cowboy there. Uh, mm. He called himself a cowboy. Apparently, I'm not supposed to say that anymore. Ra ranch man, mm. um, Randy, um, and his uh, partner, Jen. A amazing, masterful mm. horse people, um, mm. wranglers and whisperers and trainers, but also uh, an amazing roper. Um, he makes like world-renowned rope mm. um, that he sells around the world. So it's about treating the hide, curing it, cutting it, mm. beveling it, straightening it, tensing it and uh, and soaking it and then braiding it. Right. And I learned a lot of that. I went to uh, several ranches and experienced right. ranch work there, branding mm. and everything that involves inoculation and castration mm. and, and herding and caring for these animals mm. um, in that process. Right. I just want to talk quickly about costume because yes. I think one of the things you talk, Costume is such a big conversation, particularly around women characters, because yeah. clothes are so important. But I think specifically oh, man, for Phil, yeah, and especially it's so evocative of, of yeah. everything that he's trying to be, right? That 
whether yeah, he alpha really male. is or but yeah. with a very sort of sexual thing to it in right. a way which Jane sort of read into it as 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 from her point of view you know mm. she saw the sort of sexualization of these guys and the celebration of their bodies beneath but also these furry chaps which yeah. is sort of like pubic hair or like a sort of half man half satyr you know yeah something very animalistic and, and and that that as well as doing a lot of writing really helped with the posture and the stance and the kind mm. of inhabiting of him as a, as a, as a physical object um, but also of his kind of prowess how he roots himself how mm. he grounds himself what he feels he belongs to and bringing mm. the outside in that very kind of um, casual disregard for fine dining and right. all the rest of it it's just he's honest about the work he does and he doesn't deny that when he comes in mm. um, you know a man who sleeps with his spurs on um, right not because he's a gunslinger, but because he wants, he, he doesn't see anything authentic within the house that speaks right. to him in the same way as, as those being spurs. a ranchman, mm. as those spurs. <laughs> right. <laughs> and obviously, I mean, I, I think as a woman, Rose was a character that I felt such deep empathy for, for the kind of position that she finds herself in. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, taking on that role, was there, was it challenging? Was there something, what was the most kind of difficult thing to manage about that character? I think the fact that, you know, I didn't really have scenes with anybody. Mm -hmm. It's like I had to create this monster and then, like, psychologically kind of make myself feel really insecure and horrible about myself. Mm -hmm. right. And so it was kind of a painful place to live in mm -hmm. when I was working. It just didn't, it's not who I am. Mm -hmm. It's like a very old part of myself. So to, like, bring up all this stuff that you've kind of moved past in your mm -hmm. life can, it's just, yeah, Droz is so insecure and, and it's just uh, a sad character to, mm. you know, to be. To delve into. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously you've just said that it was quite uh, painful to dig up all that stuff. What, how did you manage, when once the, the camera stopped rolling and you had to kind of switch back into being yourself, yeah. was that difficult? How did you manage that? I mean, I don't think when you're working you ever like go switch back to, your, you're right. kind of just like doing the scene and then you go home and, I do, I do think I was like a little bit more uh, worried about what I had done that day mm -hmm. than I normally am. Like mm -hmm. a little bit more insecure about what I had done. I think just because that was kind of such a part of Rose that, mm -hmm. that I think it's normal to just have a little bit of something, a current happening throughout filming. But it's right. not something that when I'm done, then I'm, I'm done. Was working with Jesse, did that help or was that I, weird? I or? think it helped because, you know, I could have lunch with him when mm. we were both there on the same days or we could ride into work together. So there was a comfort there that that I think was, it's, it's so nice. And also he's just like my favorite, he's my favorite actor to work with, so. Right. <laughs> that helps. Yeah. Um, one of the things I think that was so startling when I was watching it was that you, you start off feeling like you're in this Western and then it sort of devolves into this weird psychological torture yeah. sort of yeah, yeah. and for Rose she feels very much like a, a pawn sort of in the games of all the other people but including her son mm -hmm. and I was wondering as the, the kind of mother character did you did you think about what your son as a character was was doing like how much did you did you imagine what his internal life was separate to what was on the page I think in the beginning Rose you know her she's a widow her and her son live together we work at this inn and I think as a mother of a, like a 16 year old boy, boys don't talk to their mm. moms about everything that's going on. I know she knows her son is, you know, uh, she, she's different in a way. He likes to, you know, um, he's really into like medical stuff. Mm. And I, I think she's just like my kids, I know he's different in this cowboy world. So that's worrisome mm. um, because people kill people for, you know, being different mm. and so that is something that really is an anxiety for Rose when she gets to the ranch and she sees her son being you know taken by Benedict and pulled away from her I think there's so many things going through mm. her head like what is he doing with my son right and so that is just terrifying and my son is going off with him like mm. what is their relationship and is he gonna kill my like what's gonna happen to my son so that is a very you know a source of like a ton of you know anxiety and for Rose and and then but there is a deep connection between her and her son mm. and Cody and I like had a secret together while we were filming so that you know we did have this strange other level of bond that connected us really mm. deeply in a different way right um, and then obviously we kind of go with her on this journey and that that scene with the gloves I felt like that oh, was yeah. such a 
you, you really feel for all of the things that she wanted out of her life and didn't necessarily get. And I was wondering, how did you kind of, that, that interaction is so palpable, even though it's so, there's not much dialogue there. Mm -hmm. Did you work on that specifically? Because that's kind of her apex moment, right? Where she yeah. she moves into this other realm. How, what was the kind of development of that, that scene for, for I you? I think that scene for Rose is like someone showing her human kindness, like mm -hmm. a real, just like a soul connection and a, um, also just why is he being so wasteful with these hides? It's just like, it's just the, you know, she she finally has the courage to stand up to him in some kind of a mm. way. And what she gets is kindness in return. So I right. think that kind of, um, that, so that for her is just, yeah, the, the height in her emotions of, mm. um, of like what she needs. She needs mm -hmm. someone to hold her and take care of her. It's right. been like, you know, so I think, yeah, it's just the tipping point. Mm -hmm. And physically she's kind of unwell at that point mm -hmm. too, so yeah. So the film, very intense. Um, how, obviously your character is very, uh, there's a lot of dimension, even though you're very kind of still as a character. And I wanted to know what was the most kind of challenging Thing about taking on this role that is is so multi-dimensional and, and yet so still. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think you can go into it much deeper than that. I don't think you worded mm -hmm. it correctly. I mean, there's a great duality to the nature of how he holds himself and how he expresses himself and and moves and walks and talks. I mean, in, in every every way that we view and and embrace him, um, it's really hard to put your finger on mm -hmm. <laughs> what he's thinking and how he ticks and and maybe what's happened to him to, to, to be this way. But um, yeah, I, I think that's really where I, I just dived into my work with Jane and, and surrendered to, to newer techniques and, you know, body movement. And, um, I, you know, I take my hat off to Jane there because that's where I feel she challenged me to kind of unleash my potential in, in that sense. But mm -hmm. that just began with me falling in love with the idea of Peter and, and those mm -hmm. challenges that mm -hmm. were only expressed at that time through a book and a script. Um, so, yeah. How, I was struck in particular, and I probably most people were, in the scene where he walks up to the tree and then you walk back, and it, it was so, there's no insecure, there was no insecurity there. There was mm. no, even though we're all aware that he's being watched and name called and all that stuff. Yeah. You're just it, in that singular mindset. And that really, for me, was what the character was about, was that that singular goal. And and you say at the beginning, like, who would I be if I didn't protect my mother? Absolutely. How, how much did you tease out in terms of building that character on your own and how much of it was already there in the script for you to, to kind of dive into? I think a great deal of that was already in the script. It was just a matter of interpreting it in the mm -hmm. right way. And again, that, that um, Know, echoes to the idea of it being a challenge because you don't want to bring too much to it. Mm. I feel it's already the essence is there, and it's just how do we bring this, you know, mm. to, to people's attention um, in a live format. So mm. I think Jane, like I said, was a great, great help in that, and and she did landmark those those scenes. I mean, mm. that was a very important one that we worked on one on one um, to express those ideas of his his confidence. It was a symbol for mm. for who he is there, mm. and I think you know. Bill's interaction with him there is, is very important. Um, he's somewhat, you know, intimidated and envious of, of this idea of being completely grounded and mm. and at, at one with yourself, um, which unfortunately he has had to kind of suppress that right. nature within himself. So there's a beautiful dance there and it expresses mm. a lot without words. So right. I think there's many moments throughout this movie like that. There's a lot of power mm -hmm. play between Peter and Phil, I feel like, in terms Definitely. of, it starts off where you think, you know, Benedict's got all the power, but really, absolutely, it's a completely a subversion of that. Yeah, for a movie to, you know, recontextualize your whole mm -hmm. understanding of the first and second act, um, and it, again, it does that in the book and the script, mm -hmm. it's it's fascinating, and that's, that's one of my favorite things, you mm -hmm. know, a twist. Um, but I think this is, I don't know if it can even be called a twist, it's something very different. Mm -hmm. um, it's and an evolution. It feels like an, yeah. an evolution yes, absolutely. of something that's always there that you just haven't seen yet. Exactly right. That's how I express Peter is that, you know, people ask, what is his arc? How did I, mm. what, you know, I don't think he has an arc. He mm. is completely grounded in the nature of his being. And it's our perception that dances around him mm. relative to, to how the story pans out mm. and the people around him. 
And of course, yeah, I mean, he doesn't really have like a transmutation throughout the story. He, right. he is who he is, and it's just us who judge him correct, incorrectly or correctly. Right. I was, when I spoke to Kirsten earlier, she said that you guys had a little secret that you shared that yes. helped you. You don't have to tell me what it was, um, but how did that kind of, because obviously you've got that, you're a unit, and then all of a sudden now you're put into this other place and there's like a gravitational pull of, yes. against you and her. What, how was that dynamic both in terms when you were playing scenes together and then also when you were off, off duty? I think it was to treat it like, um, Jane and I would have this approach very similar to like what Kirsten and I had as a secret, but it was this old idea of a secret, of secrecy in itself. Mm -hmm. um, it was that Peter is on somewhat of a secret mission. He's a secret agent in a way. Mm. Um, and even though he, he can be pulled away from his mother and you think he's completely missing this torment or this distress that his mother's going through, I think uh, in, in many ways it's always still in the back of his head mm. and uh, you know he's, he's on a mission so not to give away too much <laughs> there but again that's among the challenge mm -hmm. that it was to play him and I don't know it's something that I, I related to my mother she's a, a single mother mm -hmm. and I have a little brother who she looks after and there's this amazing dance there that happens um, between a, a son and a mother mm -hmm. it, where we change roles, you know, she supports me and she holds me up at times when I'm vulnerable, but it goes vice versa. Right. Um, so that's a very beautiful thing. And in the name of unconditional love, I mean, I think mm. he defends that greatly. Mm, absolutely. Um, yeah, I found it quite moving the, the scene where he's talking or you are talking to Benedict about your, the father's death. And I felt that's such a pivotal thing for the character to have experienced. How much did you hang your hat of who Peter was on that moment? Um, I would say, obviously, in the development of who he is, his identity, his personality, his his trauma, um, mm. that, that you know, made him who he is today. I, mm. I think that has a great, great deal of, uh, yeah, it's a great impact. Mm. But I can't say that, you know, like many of the discussions today, if we experience trauma, we, in our, social structure today, we call it suppressed trauma because mm -hmm. we often think we have to hide it or it's pushed down somewhere that we have to unravel later in our life when we're able to. I think he had this ama amazing ability and possibly in his isolation and with the upbringing of such a, a beautiful mother, he didn't have to suppress it. He didn't have to right. push it down anywhere. He's very eye to eye with that pain. And um, I think that if anything upholds his, his strength, mm. um, yeah, yeah.